Seeing as Scotland seems to be having a complete tantrum with the weather lately, I thought I'd jump straight into Adobe Photoshop and run you through my editing workflow for the majority of my deep sky images. My name's Helena and welcome back to my channel, Helena's Astrophotography. Adobe Photoshop. I don't use PixInsight. I have tried it, but I wasn't a fan. I feel like I have more creative flow and more control over my image in Photoshop. It really comes down to personal preference, but here we are in Adobe Photoshop 2020 and the wind is blowing a hooli outside. Oh! So this is an image of the Whirlpool Galaxy. You can maybe slightly see it in the centre there. This is 60 second subs, there's 120 60 second subs at ISO 800, so two hours of data. Um, this image has already been calibrated. If you don't know what that means, basically I have applied dark bias and flat frames, 20 of each, to this image to combat noise and things like vignetting. So let's jump straight into the editing process. So the first thing I do whenever I get an image in Photoshop is I come up to image, I go into mode and I change it to a 16 bit channel. Now you're gonna see it changes it to the local adaptation, what Photoshop wants to do to it and thinks looks great. You don't want local ad adaptation, you want to change that to exposure and gamma and you can see that it goes back to the way it was before. So once I've done this, the first thing I like to do is go into image, adjustments and levels. And you can see all the data is roughly in the middle here. So we're just gonna drag these individual channels just towards the start of the peak. You don't want to be clipping any of the data. You want to make sure this number on each of the channels is the same. So I'm gonna remember 65 and I just actually can just type that in. It's gonna go a bit funky for a second and you're gonna wonder, Helena, what are you doing? No. And here we are a little bit back to normal. So as you can see, we have some quite severe stacking artifacts um, all the way around the image. This is just from Shift in the Night. Um, Shift in Frames and Deep Sky Stacker has done quite a good job um, of sorting out the frames for me. But I do want to crop that out because I really don't want that in the final image. So I'm just going to use the crop tool and roughly center M51 in the frame. Now I'm gonna do another levels adjustment. You always want to be going back to your levels. Um, I like checking my levels quite frequently and I'm going to now bring that in almost halfway. If you bring it all the way, you're gonna start clipping data and the background is gonna be too stark black. So I like to bring it just, just over halfway. You really get a feel for it once you do it, but I'm just gonna bring it just over halfway. So now I'm gonna go into image adjustments again, but this time I'm gonna go into curves and I'm going to make quite a modest stretch. These are called astro stretches. Now what you don't want to do is be hitting the roof with this because if you're hitting the roof, your highlights are gonna be absolutely blown out. So for, um, in this instance, the core in the Whirlpool is just gonna to be too, too blown out. So I'm gonna just bring this down just slightly. But you can see we've stretched the data there and more is coming out. Then again, I'm gonna go into my levels and I'm gonna bring it just about halfway. So I'm gonna now create a new layer. So you can use a shortcut, it's on Windows, it's Control, Alt, Shift, N and E, and this makes a new layer. So I've created a new layer and I'm actually going to do my levels again, seeing as I got rid of that nasty um, point in the image and I'm just going to do another curve stretch for badness because I want to get as much data out of this as possible. The amount of images I processed I start to notice um, a pattern of things in my images and you can see that from um, the top right to the bottom left we have a gradient right across this image so it gets darker here and as you go up it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Um, you can muck around in Photoshop and try to do this. I do not have the skills to do that. So I bought an external plugin 
called it's from RC Astro and it's called Gradient Exterminator and I find it works really really well in my images so I'm going to go to filter RC Astro Gradient Exterminator. I always have it in medium, I don't like having it too strong. If I need to go again, I'll just run medium again. Click OK. That's done an absolutely fantastic job. So now you can see that there's no gradient across the image at all. So if we go into history, and I'll show you before, that's before and that's after, and you can see it's completely evened that out. That's an absolutely, it's done an absolutely fantastic job. So I'm actually going to label this layer gradient removal, if I can spell. So now the data, I'm happy with it. It seems to be stretched quite nicely. It's not too much, it's not too little. You can go again if you want, but make sure you're keeping an eye on those highlights and those white points. So now I am going to do my noise reduction process, which is actually normally quite a hefty process for me, but this night wasn't actually as warm um, as a lot of my nights are. And if we zoom in, we can't really see, I mean, there's noise, but it's like quite an even pattern all over it. And there's quite an easy way to get rid of this, I'm very happy to say. So if you go into filter, camera raw filter, we're gonna go into detail, and we're gonna go into noise reduction and we're gonna do color noise reduction. So if you watch these green and blue pixels, we're gonna drag this color slider all the way up and you can see that if at 49, I'm gonna make that 50. I absolutely love this action. I don't go editing a photo without using it ever. And as you can see, it's done a really, really nice job. So I'm gonna press okay. Um, and I'm gonna call this noise reduct. One. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and use another external plugin called Astronomy Tools. It just basically makes the process much, much quicker. There's lots of options you can use here. So the main one that I use, I don't use a lot of them at all. The main one I use is Space Noise Reduction. So I'm going to play that. There's Space Noise Reduction, which focuses on the deep sky object. And there's Deep Space Noise Reduction, which focuses on the background. But I've done my color noise reduction for the background. So I'm not needing to do anything with that at all. One thing with the astronomy tools is they are actually quite aggressive. And you do have to trade off some things in the image. So it's going to now yeah, come out quite blurry. And I can imagine that the YouTube compression is doing its thing to this image already. And it's making it really fuzzy for you guys. So I really apologize for that. But this is quite blurry as it is. And I'm really not happy with that at all. It's taking away the detail in the galaxy arms and it's not what I want. So I'm gonna come over here to opacity, which is currently at 100%. And I am going to bring that down to around 30, 29 is fine. So as you can see, I've kept that detail, but the noise is at a minimum. So I've gone ahead and done my stretching, my gradient removal, my noise reduction, and now it's time to move on to star reduction. Now, especially with a small target like this, you really want it to pop out of the image. You don't want it to be flat against the background. You want people to notice it and think, oh, that really stands out from the stars. So we're gonna do a little bit of a star reduction and there's a really, really easy way with no extra plugins needed in Photoshop to do this. So I'm gonna zoom in on a star. I think I'm gonna choose this one over here and I'm going to go to select color range and I'm gonna change sampled colors to highlights. And I'm just gonna sample this color here and you can drag the fuzziness slider up and down to your taste and the range as well. So about there will do it for me. I'll hit okay. I can go to select, modify, expand. I'm gonna expand by about two. Reason for this is to get the star halos in as well. And then we're gonna go to select, modify again, and we're gonna go to feather. And this is basically gonna smooth out the selection and you're not gonna have as sharp an edge on the stars. So after this, we're gonna go to filter, other, minimum. So a radius of one, click okay. And boom, the stars are still there. They look really nice, loving the color in them but the galaxy is just popping that bit more, which is exactly what I was looking for. Okay, so we've done star reduction and now we're going to go into color and sort of boosting the saturation a little bit. Now, this is really where personal preference comes in. Personally, I like to go with the color of um, the galaxy that I've seen with the majority of images on the internet. I want to get as true to the real color as possible. 
Um, I say that, but when I took this image, you'll see on my Instagram, Helena's underscore Astro, if you're not following already, you will see on my Instagram that I haven't gone with the true color, so to speak, of the galaxy. Normally you'd see it as blue and gold, but I have made it sort of a purpley, magenta sort of color. It was quite heavy on my processing back then. I'm not gonna do it as heavy as you'll see in this routine now, but I'm gonna go for the same color so you can compare it to the photo on Instagram. So to do this, we don't want to select anything else in the image but the galaxy. How do we do that? We're gonna go into select. Actually, I'm gonna zoom in first so that we've got a nice view. I'm gonna go into select color range and I am not gonna do highlights this time. Make sure you change that to sampled colors and I'm gonna click sampled colors. So what you see in white here is what you've selected. All right, so we've made the selection on the galaxy as you can see and the majority of the galaxy is selected, which is absolutely fantastic. Then we're gonna go into layer, new adjustment layer, and you can really choose between vibrance, hue and saturation and color balance. It's whatever works for you. For me, color balance did the trick for this image, but I might use hue and saturation or vibrance in another one. It really comes down to personal preference and the image itself. So here is sort of when you have a little bit of free reign. As I said, I like to get as close to the true color as possible. So whatever floats your boat really. I don't like an oversaturated image. I don't like the vibrant slider slid up to a hundred. I don't like any of that. I like a natural looking image, but there's a lot you can do with very little movement in the color balance section. So you've got to be really careful. So as I said before, I'm gonna be going for something similar to my Instagram photo. I can never do the same edit twice in a row. Not at all. So we're going to go into the magentas a little bit really, really, really slowly. Um, and you can start to see that even that is just too much in my taste. That's gonna be different for every person, but I think that is a little bit too much. So we're just gonna bring that up a little bit. Remember, if you back out of color balance and you think it's too much, you can just push the saturation slider down a little bit. So it's not a problem. All right, I think that's looking not too bad. I'm just gonna back out of that and I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm going to go into a hue and saturation. I'm just gonna slide it slightly down, just a little bit. All right, so now we've got a decent looking image. It doesn't look too bad, considering that it was with a DSLR in the height of Scottish summer, which isn't really summer for anyone else, but it, but it is for us. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna make a little bit of a crop again because I did shoot this at 510 millimeters given that I had a 0.85 times focal reducer on my 600 millimeter focal length telescope. Normally, people are gonna be shooting this at 800, 900, 1000 millimeters, but no, I decided to go in at 510 because why not? I'm gonna crop this just a little bit so that the galaxy is more in focus rather than the surrounding stars. From here, it's just final touches. So I'm actually, not a lot of people would do this at the end, but I'm gonna adjust my levels again uh, just to find my black point. I don't want, um, it to be too dark a background though and I'm just going to go into curves for the sake of it because why not I'm just gonna bump that up just a little bit just to get that little bit more detail in the galaxy arms just gonna bring that down and you can see that that is popping quite nicely now once you've done that and you've got a starker background you might then want to go into hue and saturation and just back off a little bit. I'm really happy with the overall image. What's interesting in this one is you can see three fainter galaxies in a sort of triangle here. So I'm really pleased that my little 80 millimeter pulled that off and um, my 80 millimeter doublet. If you want a tutorial on stacking, calibration frames, things like deep sky stacker, leave a comment down below. I'd, more than be, I'd be more than happy to do that for you because that image was pre-calibrated in deep sky stacker. So if you'd like a lesson on how to do that, let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, happy stargazing, stay safe and clear skies.